what's going on everybody went to the second card show this weekend this was in plainfield indiana very very good show as always the promoter does very well in promoting everything out there he rotates i believe it's six tables each show with fresh dealers and the rest of them you know are they come each month maybe with a skip here or there on to it so you're always seeing fresh at least six fresh tables per show which is really good um had some conversation with him out there and everything um really really knowledgeable in a lot of different areas out there so if you guys ever get a chance to go by there usually it's the first table as soon as you walk in on the right his name is archie go over there lots and lots of knowledge out there Let's see here. Oh, I forgot to mention real quick, in the beginning of the video, you guys should have had two pictures of the upcoming shows out there. I will post them at the end of the video a little bit longer in case you guys need to freeze it, screenshot type deal onto it. So if you guys are in that area, which is near Indianapolis, Indiana, stop by, check it out. Good deals as always. I went today with uh, a friend of mine, Chad. I was not set up. He was. I was just there as a buyer um very thankful he asked me to come along with him got some nice pickups of the day nothing well there's some nice stuff wildcat you gotta wait to the end for football gotta wait to the end the only reason why is we saved the best for last right all right so this is a lot here i did pick up from chad because i was looking for some stuff thrown for grading of course you guys know me and Sidney crosby stuff this is the exquisite um out of 399 i gotta look it over might go off to get graded it was still sealed. Um, Danny Luna. This is impeccable WWE stuff. This is from NXT UK. Uh, 99. Figured we might give it a shot if I have to have a filler down the road. A little toss press team. I've had really good, uh, I should say, grades so far. Probably need to knock on wood here. Um, everything's been tens on this stuff, so we'll probably give it a shot. You know, Pirates, one of the bottom teams out there. Always will be. Thanks, Mr. Nutting. But, uh, We'll see what happens. Henry Davis, Bowman Sterling Auto. He was called up this year. Take a look at Mike Gath throw it out there, too, to be graded. All right, next deal came up to the table. Guy wanted cashed out. He wanted to go move into something else, so cashed him out. Believe it or not, some of this stuff was really, really cheap, and it'll be up on eBay later. Uh, well, you go it'll already be up there by the time you guys see this video. Might already be sold. First up, 2021 Optic Jamar Chase rated rookie. This is the Aqua PSA 9 uh, out of 299. So something different, like I said. If a deals make right, put them out there. Let's on eBay. No hurry to get stuff sold. 2018 rookie Josh Allen. This is in the or tw yeah 2020 Panini Score Josh Allen rookie PSA 10. This is in College Uni from Wyoming. Not number, nothing like that. But everybody always likes Josh Allen. It's a little bit of a cheaper one out there. Then finally, these here, he got called up, I believe, Jordan Walker. Or he is getting called up. You guys are fresh. I don't watch a whole lot of baseball anymore. But Bowman Draft, Chrome Refractors first, Bowman's, PSA 10s. Highs that he's been 150. There's been some 80 cells. Um, looked at, I think that we comped him at about 115, 120 a pop to be in a safe side. There's a couple on auction and we're sitting at like 105, $106. So just some smaller pickups just to fill up the eBay store. I mean, when you can get the stuff at a good bulk rate, give it a shot, see what happens with it. Well, okay. I know you've been waiting. I promise last three right now, football, buddy, last three football. So I was walking by, I replaced these holders. Believe it or not, these booklet magnetics now, they're hard to find. When you do, they're like $15 a pop. But I changed them out just because they were all scratched up. I had some new ones. Playbook with the Adidas logo. Out of five. St. Brown. I like this one. Um, offhand, so I picked it up. He did have one. It was out of 25 as well. I was thinking about, but I figured I'd just stick with the one out of five. I know somebody else, I think his is number two out of five. I might try to pick it up or see if he wants this, do a swap trade type deal. Or if not, just hold on to it. Football season's around the corner. This guy was doing pretty good. We'll see what happens this year up there in good old Detroit land. Next one, PC. Not to buy one wrong, grade it. Even though I know, I know it's SGC, but we'll take it. It's Kenny Pickett. Mosaic stained glass. These tigs here. I think 
SGC don't have a whole lot of tens in them. I think the, there was like two sales, 300 and 400 on to it. But figure what the heck, we'll grab it. Goes into the old Kenny Pickett collection, so hopefully he does well. Way down the road, probably end up moving some of this stuff. And finally, it's out of 25. Joey is jealous of this out there, the AKA the bullpen. This is a T-Law playbook, six relic, got a little bit of football in there. I know because the bag and stuff, so it's kind of hard to see with the glare. I'm trying to fix it here a little bit. But it's Trevor Lawrence. It is a sticker auto onto it. I have a sleeve on top of this in there, of course, and then the team bag, just so this case don't get scratched up. Uh, so I want to talk about this card here. So there are two sales in this card. One is at 550, one is at 1345. The 550 is recent. And this is why I say you, you have to always look when people come up and tell you a price on this something. The 550 was done at 747 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on a Friday morning. Who has an auction go off that early? I'd buy this all day at 550. I looked at some of the other sales. These booklets are the ones that everybody wants out of them. Um, where's the price value? I don't know. I've had all kind of altering prices everywhere from eight to nine hundred. I think with someone one of those two were the lows up to probably about twelve, thirteen hundred. But got a really good price and really happy with it. If he does anything this year, it's a good play to have on to it. If he's the future of Jags and plays, you know, four, five, six years down the road, still doing well. Never know what'll happen to it. But playbook, very cheap product. Everybody looks for these. There's another bigger, uh, like a, I forget what they're called. Um, it's a bigger booklet, but they look for those into it. So kind of like your more premium hits, I guess you could say, out of playbook, if that makes sense. Overall, I think I was in today. I bought a box. I forgot I don't have it here with me because it's still in the bag. Uh, Bowman U Chrome uh, Basketball, just because I was bored. No, I didn't pull anything good in it. That's why I didn't even have it down here to show. I think total today, I was like 1700 roughly. I spent, I know people always ask. I don't mind saying it because it's recorded on my taxes each year anyhow. Roughly like 1700 was spent. I, I remember a lot. I, only, I gave him 70% value of what I thought I would be able to reach on to it. That way it left me a little bit of wiggle room on to it if I have to go to auction. Um, I think it was 1700 on everything, if I recall correctly. That's with a box of Bowman Chrome University. Those sell at 150 a pop off hand. So everything in front of me would have been like 1550 if I if I had my math right in my head. It's been a long, long day. I was up at 4 a.m. Uh, to get up to Louisville, then ride up with Chad. And <laughs> my, my math in my head's not working right. But if I'm right, I think that's about where I was at on everything paying for everything on there. But overall, like I said, really, really good show. All his dealers always show up, which is really a good thing. And like I was telling Archie up there, the person hosting, promoting, running the show, whatever you want to say with the terminology, but it's in charge of the whole thing. Their whole thing is that they are there to fill the tables with vendors and to promote the show the best they can to bring people in. He can't... Now, don't get me wrong, the show had a good traffic, okay, when I say this. But I, like I was telling him, you can't always just, you know, go on the street and grab everybody's hands and bring them into the show to go look at cards. So if you ever have an off show, that could be why, you know. You never know, vacations, where's everybody at, was there something else going on in the area. He didn't really have that problem. It was a pretty good steady flow of traffic, as you guys could see uh, from the opening video what it looked like with dealers set up in this second little snippet was a little after nine o'clock. I think I did that one. So it was pretty busy in there like that uh, the whole time, which is really, really good for a show. Um, as far as, you know, always filling your tables up, that's good. He can't control what vendors bring. You know, you hope that you can get different items and by rotating your tables, which I think is a good idea having so many you rotate out with fresh, uh, um, vendors or dealers coming in you get a little bit of fresh inventory coming in with different things but you never can control what somebody brings to their pricing on that's not them so when you hear people say all oh, those dealers are high price at the show it kind of sounds like it's negative about the show what's really not the 
the person running it can't control the inventory brought in or the prices the dealers are charging on to it. So if ever a time in my videos it makes it sound like it's negative, it's really not. It's just that the, there's a lot of times where I'd say, and this is probably realistic, 70 to 80% of the cards out there are overpriced. A lot of people won't price it the night before. And I can understand, like, if it's sold at 122 and you have it stickered at 130. I'm talking about it's sold, last sold at 122 and you got it at 150, 160, 200 type deal out there. It, they have no control over it. Anybody's running a show out there. But, you know, th what he does up there is what you really, really want in a lot of the promoters that do that. There's a lot of good promoters out there. There's ones out there just in to get the table money. And you know, make their 500 to X amount of thousand or thousands out there off the show, and that's it. But like I said, he does a lot of uh pushing out the info out there on social media, promoting the show, showing different videos if the vendors send them to him with inventory being brought in. So somebody be like, Oh, I want to go there, I want to get there early, get that car type deal. But it's it's really good to see how different. People who run shows actually put it together, advertise, and get everything together onto it. So, like I said, I'm going to clip here in about about less, way less than a minute to some more of the show dates. If you guys are up in Plainfield, Indiana, make sure you guys stop by, check out one of the shows. Uh, it'll be worth it. It'll really be worth it. This being before the national. You know, you either expected there wouldn't be a whole lot of people wanting to sell because they want to take stuff to national, thinking they're going to get bigger trades, bigger money, or you're looking at people that were going to cash out. And I can tell you about both shows, there weren't a whole lot of people looking to cash out to get money to go to the national. So it was a little bit different this year than in the years past. Barnett, guys, I am out. Stay tuned if you guys want to freeze frame it for the two different flyers. They'll come up with all the show dates. Other than that, guys, I am out. Have a good one.